Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today I'll be showing you some of the lowest recoil M4s possible in Tarkov such as this suppressed drum mag beauty with 64 ergonomics and 29 recoil which is only possible since this patch. There's a couple of key parts that we need to take a look at which make all of the difference to the best M4 builds because in the past it could still get to crazy levels of recoil but if you tried to use one of these min recoil builds and suppress it and use a 60 rounder the ergo started to get a little low. With these new parts however you can kind of get everything you want at a price. These are the AX15 upper, the two Hansen barrels, the low pro gas block, and the Griffin suppressor muzzle brake combo. What's interesting to note is that most of these pieces are not part of the lowest recoil build. The only exception is the low pro. Typically what these pieces give us is a good trade-off between ergonomics and recoil. So although it might not be the cutting edge min recoil build, the ergonomics that it gives more than makes up for it. So the current lowest recoil M4 at the moment is 23, as you can see here. And this comprises using the Ultor upper. It's a little bit confusing because there's so many parts, but this thing has minus 4% recoil reduction. Then on the muzzle, we have the Seika ASR. This is the suppressor that goes onto the respective brake here, which is the flash hider. And then at the back, we've got the ARE with the PRS Gen 3 on. And as you can see, once you've applied a drum magazine as well, this ends up at about 17 ergonomics, which is not very good. And that's even including adding on like cantilever mounts and this special scope to try and improve the ergonomics a little bit, even with the best charging handle and stuff like that. So even if you try to optimize this a bit, so we change over the RK2 for something really good, like the SE5, for example, and the PRS Gen 3, we move over to one of the MOE carbines, which is normally what I recommend. This ends up at 40 ergonomics with 26 vertical recoil. I mean, this is not bad by any means, but it can be better. Unfortunately, with an upper change, we have to basically start the weapon again from scratch. And there's a new one here, which is the AX15, not to be confused with the TX15, like I did one time. And this one has a minus 3% recoil reduction. So let's switch over to that. This compared to the Ultor has one less recoil reduction because this one, as we just saw, has four, but it has 14 ergonomics rather than eight. So this is a swing of six ergo for the price of one recoil, which is honestly quite a good trade-off in my opinion. And from here, we have the barrels. There are two new barrels here, the Hansen 16 and the Hansen 13.7. If you go to compare which ones these are similar to, the Hansen 13.7 is basically the same as the 370 mil, which is the standard one. These both have 3% recoil reduction, but the Hansen has minus 12 ergo, whereas the standard standard one has minus 14. Then you've got the Hansen 16. The Hansen 16 inch is a bit like having the AR15 18 inch because these both have minus five, but the Hansen is minus 15 rather than minus 22. This is actually quite a big deal and a big swing in ergonomics. Now, obviously the lowest recoil build uses the 20 inch barrel. There is no equivalent to this, but it has minus 6% recoil, which is only one more. And the ergonomics is now minus 29. So this is seven even compared to the 18 inch and compared to the Hansen, this is crazy. This is like minus 14 ergonomics for one recoil. This is just not a good trade-off. So we're going to use the longest Hansen one here to make our meta builds today. Next up, we have the handguard. There are some alternatives but for now we're just going to go for the SAI because even though it's extremely expensive it is still the best. Vertical foregrips wise we know that we shouldn't really use the RK2 so I'm just going to use the SE5. You can use one of the canters like this one the RK1 just depends on whether you want to go slightly more ergo centric or slightly more recoil centric. I'm going to use the SE5 for now. Gas blocks wise I'm going to use the low pro with this particular combination can't do anything other than using the old one or the low pro and this one is strictly better it's got the same ergo but the recoil is improved by 1% so we're going to stick this on and then instead of using the Seika suppressor the ASR plus the Seika suppressor itself we're going to use a very slightly different muzzle which is the G-Log and the Griffin Griffin armament hammer we're going to put this on and we're going to put the compatible suppressor on the front the M4 SDK and when you look through the stats you'll find that this one has half a point worse recoil reduction but you gain four ergonomics for it over the Seika so that half point recoil is just not really worth taking. We're keeping the drum mag in from the low recoil build and the ARE and MOESG because this is really the bang for buck best with the rubber butt pad we now have 62 ergonomics and 29 vertical recoil. From here you can do the clever little thing you can add these cantilever mounts which are plus one ergo so we can add one there and then we can add one over here as well and then in terms of a top scope just to make this comparable to what we were looking at previously i quite like using this the geisley super precision this gives you half a point of ergo and then when you add the mount ring on top without an rmr attachment point this also gives you another half so you get one more ergo for doing this and inside i'm just going to put the video because that's what we had on before then we're going to put on the front and back irons the chris defiance are the lightest and i think also the cheapest i'm going to stick those on and that's how you get to 64 ergonomics and 29 vertical recoil with a drum mag 
and suppressed with a voodoo, which is absolutely outrageous. Now, obviously, this is extremely expensive. This is not a cheap weapon by any means. It comes in probably at around half a million rubles. However, if you want the best, this is probably it. Before we continue, today's video is sponsored by Enlisted, a free historically authentic World War II multiplayer shooter. And what makes it different from other games is how it deals with AI enemies. In order to achieve large scale combat, the squad system allows each player to control two to nine soldiers, depending on the troop class, such as infantry, sniper, or tanker, and you can swap between them in battle. For example, when you get downed, run out of ammo, or need a specialist piece of equipment only available on one of your team. Each squad member is kitted out individually with certain weapons, additional items like grenades and perks, so you can specify exactly what you want depending on your playstyle. I was very surprised to see such a high level of customization right down to the individual soldier level, which is very cool. Weapon balance is interesting in the early game. In the Battle of Stalingrad campaign, I quickly upgraded from the Mosin to the fully automatic PPD, but I found that because the number of enemies is so high and the Mosin is so accurate with a one hit kill that I was probably better off with the original Balti. In battle, the rest of your squad are controlled by the AI, and while they don't always make the most sensible decisions on their own, you can order them to do specific things such as building structures, holding positions, or changing formations to increase their effectiveness. I really like this system because the map is full of targets, so the gameplay is fast paced, but each AI is tied to a real player who has the ability to influence their actions. It's not just infantry combat though, Enlisted has both ground vehicles such as tanks, as well as aircraft, and a detailed damage system which is a nice touch. You can also drive through a ton of map objects such as fences, log piles and fortifications. We've seen big games like Squad get this wrong in the past, so it's nice that it has done so well. It has full cross-platform support, being available on PC, Xbox and PlayStation 2. Best of all, it's free to play, so there's nothing to lose by giving it a try. If you register using my link in the description, there's a bonus including three days of premium time, as well as several orders for troops and weapons available to get you started. But as you might imagine, you don't necessarily need to do all of this to make a decent M4, you can just do bits and pieces of it as you see fit. The Hansen 16 versus the standard barrel isn't all that different actually, and one of the most expensive parts of this is the SAI QD, which ends up coming out at like 76k, and that's even from the trailer, which is pretty bonkers, so if you want a relatively decent alternative, this thing has minus 3% recoil, and the only other handguard that you can get minus 3% recoil from is this one, the Alexander Arms Mark 10. Now the ergonomics is nowhere near the same, obviously we've got two cantilever mounts on here as well, so that takes it from 12 ergonomics up to 14. But if we apply this guy, then the one of the beauties for this is that on the Mark 10 rail, you can use the CQR foregrip. This is not accessible on the SAI, so it's actually quite a nice little bonus thing that you can put on here. It also has a place for a laser or light just at the front already. Unfortunately, you can't put on the front irons either, so you lose another recall here against the SAI, but this version gets us to 52 and 28, which if you can actually buy the Mark 10, is not that bad because this thing's only 23k, so you're saving 50,000 rubles here for the sake of about five ergonomics, something like that. And this is still eminently usable. Another place that you can save some money, the M4SD is about 86k, which is pretty expensive. So there are like a bunch of different alternatives, obviously, in terms of suppressors. There are some that are very similar to both the Seika and the Griffin. These are the Thor, for example, or the AAC Blackout SDN. These two are pretty good, as you can see in the table. One alternative that I quite like that's relatively cheap and is kind of like good middle ground is the Thunder Beast, the 223CB, this thing which is the Thunder Beast Arms Muzzle Break. And then onto that, we can add the Ultra 5. This gets this build to 47 Ergo and 29 Vertical Recoil. And this is still not to be sniffed at, right? This is a lot cheaper than the other version because of some of the adjustments that we've made here. Still has a drum and is still suppressed. This is also slightly lighter because the Ultra 5 is a very light suppressor. And we can do this barter that I like to do often with this, which is one to Gilla Cap and two regular leather caps for it, which is a real, real nice one. Sometimes caps are kind of expensive, but you have to just check and try and buy these when they're nice and cheap. The one final thing to say about this build is that you don't need to go with the drum. The drum mags are really good, but I've been toying recently with the 40 rounders. I keep coming back and forth between 40 rounders, and I do think they're quite decent. Just as a rule of thumb, it'll feel like a standard AKM with a 30 rounder in it in terms of the amount of time you get to fire versus this 40 rounder in an M4. Now, obviously, you get 10 more bullets here, so you get more chances to hit headshots and that kind of thing. And obviously the recoil is much lower. So this can be a nice middle ground. The only issue here is that sometimes it is a little tricky to pick an outfit that actually works for this. There are only two non-armored rigs that work, which is the Alpha and the CSA. If you don't pick one of these, the only other way to make it work is using something like the AACPC or maybe the Osprey from Peacekeeper after you've completed Peacekeeping Mission. There are a couple of armored rigs that allow you to do this, but they're few and far between and you kind of have to think about your kit a bit. It also makes it a little bit awkward to insurance forward if you don't want to lose your actual gun while you're in raid because you won't be able to fit your 40s in other people's rigs. So now that we've got our builds down, let's go and have a look at how some of these performed in Raid. This will be a random mishmash of different ones, Hanson 16s, different suppressors, that kind of thing. But they're all kind of in this 29 to 35 recoil territory with about 50 ergo.
I think I might kill someone else there. There's no time like the present to reload the Mosin. We'll just keep an eye out for AI scavs and uh, reload this bad boy. Any boys? Any boys? Oh. Oh god. Take out the thick guy first. I did have it on semi. I didn't want to change it, but... You move, you die! You move, you die, chat. I feel sorry for them. Because we're just, we were just here reloading the mostly. Somebody underground. Presumably our man. I, guess, I reckon that's probably our guy. He's dipped and gone under through here. I think. Where are my extracts? Flim off, damage, sewer river. Hmm. He's not there now. Wow. What the? God damn. I can't believe that, like, hip fire spray on that gav. That was actually wild. Like a full 40, just like, nah, it's gone. Am I just gonna get shot as soon as I go after this guy? Yep. We're piecing out. Cheesing sniper level? Yep. Yep. The best way. I hate using bolties. And we're gonna cheese. I don't even care anymore. We're just cheesing. Like, they have fixed a lot of the things that were really bad. In fairness. Like, leveling strength used to be super toxic. I kill him. There's the two of them. Painkiller up here. Here's somebody running. I'm not sure where. He's over there. Must be downstairs. Really sounds like them on my floor, right? Not Tarkov's finest skill is the audio. They don't normally come up here on this side. I don't know why. Just tend not to. Yeah, there's a set over there. 
Might almost be safer. I mean, this person is like... on the loot. Yeah, best kid. You just killed me? Moisturized? Hey, man. I actually wasn't expecting you there. There's another guy in there, didn't it? Like, is he your friend or something? There's, like, somebody else just, like, looting in a way that is quite, um... Bizarre, I would say. <laughs> and that they just don't seem to care that I'm there. This guy's got all sorts of stuff on him. Now, I don't know whether he would have carried on running. He took quite a few hits. Is that the guy? Or is that someone else? I feel like that's the guy. Thanks again to Enlisted for sponsoring today's video. As I said, the game is free and I enjoyed my time playing it. So to try something a bit different, make sure to use my link and get the three days premium bonus along with extra troop and weapon orders. So as always, a big shout out to all my patrons and have fun in your raids.